threatening my family! You have no idea what I've been through! Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. <laughs> and this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about season two, episode eight of Invincible. So it's the finale for season two. So uh, we're covering season two, episode eight. And the title is I Thought You Were Stronger. If Turns I'm right. He was. No, you are. Turns okay. out he was. <laughs> oh, definitely. He was. Uh, the synopsis, Jamie. This synopsis would mean I'd have to switch windows. Hold on. Uh, after an earth-shattering betrayal, <laughs> Mark fights to rebuild his life. In the face of apocalyptic threats, he discovers new allies and wrestles with his greatest fear that he might become his father. Yeah, for your edification, for those who do not read the synopsis, it's on Amazon Prime. I always like to put those in there so that people know what it's titled. Because uh, when we do The Boys, Gen V, this... Amazon Prime is pretty cool, and they're very succinct and very to the point. Oddly enough, with Gen V, it was very interesting with uh, Godolkin and everything, but I, I like to give the synopsis so with people so that they uh, at least have a clue as to what was going on. A lot of people just brush over and go right into the episode, and I understand that completely, but I, I'm one of those people that just love the idea of what is the subject head of the particular episode before I get into it. So... Uh, your initial thoughts of this particular finale of season two, episode eight. I'm so bummed the season is over. <laughs> it is a bummer. Yeah. I really like this show and it was good. Tiny nitpick with the angstrom thing and we can get into it, but yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And I, I felt the same way. And it was kind of like, wait a minute. I thought this would last a while. <laughs> we built all this up to a half to a quarter of an episode <laughs> yeah it's like we started off with this and ended last season at that point to find out at the very end it's like oh that's it yeah <laughs> <laughs> like um, i feel like a, a girl on prom date with a guy who's too short yeah, and, i feel like angstrom <laughs> would not be happy with this either <laughs> yeah exactly you know it's like you didn't get his just desserts but uh, there's a lot of argument within it, which is very good and validated. But the justification at the very end, also with Mark, with how he settled everything and how he has to uh, resolve that within himself. I think this is what leads on because, uh, yeah, spoilers, everybody. Angstrom's dead. Very, very, very dead. dead. <laughs> Very, very, very dead. He's very, very dead. Mark is very, very red. And yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as we mentioned before, when we covered Akira, Rob, Lyra and I. Yeah. Blood. <laughs> lots and lots blood. of blood. And strangeness. So, uh, yeah, uh, my feeling about this episode, uh, it was something I was looking forward to. They they kind of wrapped it up and they do things kind of fast, as we mentioned before from the previous uh, episodes. And I do enjoy the idea that they're able to move along, give us a story, give us a plot, get to the point with a <laughs> lot of people. You know, you're, you're talking Rudy, you're talking with uh, Monster Girl, you're you're also talking uh, Future Guardians, a different reality of Guardians. You're talking Nolan, Alan the Alien, meeting up with him in prison on Viltrum. You're getting Debbie, how she 
I mean, honestly, we've talked it about it before, but this truly shows how she embraces Oliver. Yep. C- Cecil coming to Debbie and Oliver's aid for Mark because he cares about the family, not just looking to utilize Mark as a tool. And then on top of that, you get Mark's dealing with his own humanity, his Viltrum heritage and his powers and feeling like he's like his dad, but he's not. Well, this is the first time he's killed someone. Correct. It, this is the first time that he actually has killed somebody in battle. That And we realize that he's been holding back. Yes, because he kind of mentions that throughout that, like, well, aftermath battle. Yeah. Yeah, after him being stranded in a different dimension. So with that, we're going to, we've already kind of mentioned a few things, but we're going to break it down to our favorite moments within it that are very, very cool. Some of them are references to other properties of comic books, too, by the way. Oh, my God, I loved that. Uh, I love both of them. And uh, I love the kind of like the uh, reverse Jurassic Park that (laughs) he has to deal with. So our friend Daphne and Pake would love that uh, and, and the sense of aliens, but also it kind of reminded me of something of Rick and Morty <laughs> of an episode. If you watch that episode before. Yeah. And yeah, th- there's so much going on within the episode that does build us up to we're left off where when season three comes, it's going to pack a wallop and a punch just like this one did because out of nowhere, we start off the episode with uh, literally with Angstrom coming in to the uh, the whole story and Mark yeah. having to defend his family, meaning Debbie and Oliver, against somebody. And Mark has no clue as to what it is. It's kind of like very similar to what I say with the Amazing Spider-Man <laughs> 2 with Electro. If you remember Jamie Foxx's Electro and, uh, you know, Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man saying he, he had to really think hard. It's like, oh, and then, you know, Mark saying at this point, instead of it's like uh, in the movie for Amazing Spider-Man 2, at least Peter Parker or Spider-Man goes, you're that guy. You're my guy. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I knew his name. And then and this Mark's like, you're that guy. That guy, <laughs> yeah, Angstrom's been completely obsessed with him, and Mark's like, "Oh yeah, I kind of remember you." I mean, granted, Mark's been going. Mark sees a lot of bad guys. Uh, he does, yes, and and see- Angstrom didn't look the way he does now. The last time Mark saw him, no, no, he looks like a uh, human poop. Yes, <laughs> if you think about it, I I have nowhere. And this is n- in no way being racist of the color of the man or whatever. It, it, honestly, if he was green, I would probably say he looked like a poopy pickle. Yeah, he's very bulbous. Bulbous and <laughs> kind of like he he was pooped out of somebody in some yeah. way, no matter what color. It could be purple, green, orange, white. Ugh. <laughs> he, yeah. he doesn't look good. So whoever worked on him didn't do a good job. And that's really a majority of what his problem was. Is just that they fixed him. We do find out they fixed him really good to the point where he feels so much strong to battle Mark at that point. And I mean, he puts up a fight for a while. He does. He definitely does put up a fight and gives Mark uh, a, a bit of a big battle when he does go to blows. But in the very beginning, it's all mind games. Yeah. If you think about it. And going through the different portals. Yeah. Well, not just the portals, but the way he's treating Debbie, the way he's treating Oliver, utilizing his family and saying, I'm not going to kill them. And it was I want to kill you. And then eventually it was it turns around to I want to hurt them so I can kill you. And it's just like, oh, my God, this is so it's like a terrorist. Yeah. And he doesn't realize that. Yes, he's seen a lot of bad marks in the multiverses. Well, yeah, a majority of the different versions of Mark that like he even says is more than 50 percent of you has your identity of known, meaning that they all know it's Mark, his real name. And on top of that, 
he is mostly evil for all, like, I would say a majority of these worlds that, you know, Angstrom has. No, we also don't know if Angstrom's been picking and choosing for a little bit of confirmation bias or not. Correct. Yeah, it's so weird because I have a few that I looked at that he shows up, you know, it's like, you know, he sees Mark as the bad guy and him as the good. But within this, Angstrom is like literally the bad guy, as we know, because in this world, Mark is good. And every dimensional view that Angstrom has, except for the one, you know, where Mark is the bad guy. You know, the, I saw this in the beginning of the season. We all saw this in the very intro of when we see Mark on the big video billboard. Something out of like Running Man, screaming at the people, saying that you're going to be taken over, and you know it's him and his father at that point. Yeah, and we and, find out that there's some universes where Debbie helps out. Yeah, and he's you know Mark stands by his father's side. He actually has a, of all things, a cape. Too, if you remember one of the costumes, he has a, a cape, and uh, Angstrom loses a lot during each of those lives or different versions of himself, his wife, his child, anyone that stood by him, that includes the police that it looked like he was working for at that time. And then we yeah. see, you see what at one point, you know, Angstrom at the end of a line of a bunch of people kneeling down, which is very much almost like a terrorist act, but Mark just, karate chopping people's heads off down a line and angstrom at the end of it Dude. And, it's, and the blood just splattering out Dude. oh yeah <laughs> yeah all of you know his thoughts are from all the other langstroms that in, encapsulated this body because it took a little bit of a moment where he remembered where we last saw him in that chair where he didn't want to see all this suffering when we had uh, the the twins or the multiple versions of the twins, you know, going after Mark and beating him to a pulp at that point. And then literally it's Angstrom saving Mark, where Mark actually does mention that point where you saved me. Yeah. And he goes, saved you. I don't want to ever save you because he's filled with all the anger and hate that he has of all the other angstroms from all these other dimensions, all encapsulated into one body. And that's what I got out of this. And it it's, it's kind of convoluted. It's kind of very hard and deep, and it makes you want to draw to go back to those episodes. So if you listeners are out there, Go back to those particular episodes where Angstrom was like a mainstay or very much important, and you'll see what we're talking about. It, it's it's very hard to watch at times. One other thing that was of note, we're talking about the multiverse, mm-hmm. before we get into the cool different universes, the ones we sure. liked, um, is that Oliver only exists in that one. Yes, Angstrom actually points that out. Which that's a big that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Meaning that just like this Mark, who's good, Oliver is uh, pretty much the only one that's there. So meaning that it's very important. So I'm thinking that Oliver will become important to the storyline. Well, so also that this is the universe, possibly also the only one where Omni-Man has a heart. Oh, yeah. We find that out at the end. Yeah, but I mean, he's seen, but he, like, who does he think of? I want my wife back. Miss my wife. And I don't, th- I don't think he was talking about the bug. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. He was talking about Debbie. We all know that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's wild. It's like so many turns and twists in this. But uh, one thing that I do enjoy is the very opening scene where we get the jogger. And yes. It, this guy Taylor is jogging. <sighs> and we get Fat Boy Slim's uh weapon of choice playing in his ears as he's Dude, doing it. The music in the show is always perfect. <laughs> and it gets to the point he's like, I feel, I feel. And you see Mark land in the background. 
and it splashes to invincible. Invincible. Yeah, I love. I always love the splash. <laughs> I, I just thought it was splash. cool. At first, I thought it was somebody else that we all know, and I was like, "Oh no, it's not him. <laughs> it's not that person." Ah oh, man, yeah. It was, uh, but it was somebody who you could see is overweight. <laughs> They're trying to lose pounds. You got to get those lbs down. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it, there's uh, there's a lot within this episode that we just love to talk about. Uh, is there something else that you wanted to talk about, or do we want to go right into the different dimensions? I want to talk about the different dimensions. I know you did. <laughs> you know which one was my favorite. You tell me. Zombies! I know it. <laughs> and I like that instead of brains, they were like, meat, meat. Meat. Because <laughs> that's much more accurate. That's so much ro- more Robert Kirkman, like... Well, it's more or less more of old George Romero. They didn't have brains. The only time they actually talked about brains is in, if you listeners know, and our podcast of friends or fans, you will go to uh, The Last of Us or The Cast of Us when they covered Return of the Living Dead, because that was the only official time that you heard a zombie say brains. brains. It only right. takes one, though. Yeah, it does. And everybody usually mocks and laughs at that because it is pretty much a a, a horror comedy, you know, oh, yeah. for its time. You know, you got Linnea Quigley pretty much mostly nude, except for some weird crotch attachment because it couldn't get away with nudity. But um, just to give you a, a tidbit, if you're into zombie movies, I like it. I loved it because as a kid, it was well, not as a kid. I was a teenager when I saw it. But regardless, they uh, I always thought it was entertaining and funny. And then the second one is even more funnier because they have some like, key, you know, uh, you no, know, like quotes that you could actually use. And I've used it. Send more paramedics <laughs> in the first one. And it's like, um, oh, wait, uh, and then one of them was like, uh, your brain so- smells so sweet and spicy. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, but also it's like, you lied. You lied. <laughs> I'm going to eat your brains. <laughs> or get that damn screwdriver out of my head. <laughs> That's another one I always loved. That one's definitely up there for me. That's the second one, everybody, too. So if you're interested in zombie movies, go that. And me and Jamie love them. But uh, yeah, we love this idea of this that being shown that we get a zombie world. And Mark gets in there for a little, a, a bit of a moment. Uh, one of mine that Jamie will know, and I would probably absolutely love. You tell me, Jamie. All right. I'm, t- I'm torn. Go ahead. It's either the dinosaurs. No. Or Captain Spider? Yep. Did they call him Captain Spider? Or yes. Th- okay. All right. So I said Spider Man. Agent Spider. Agent Spider. Oh wow! Yeah, that's it's pretty funny how they call him Agent Spider because it's like uh, uh, kind of like a take on Agent Venom from Marvel. Yeah. Everybody. So, but uh, yeah, I I didn't look at the keywords on that one too. So I just said Spider Man type hero battling <laughs> Prof Ock instead of Doc Ock. And uh, the fact is, it's like the spider dude goes, uh, he he knew that, you know, Mark was from another dimension. And Mark, Mark points out the glowing red eyes on spider, on <laughs> Agent Spider. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was yeah. funny. It's like, but how am I supposed to know you're a good guy? You have those glowing red eyes. And then it gets shut out. <laughs> yeah. I loved that one. Especially the way they put the octopus arms on the guy. It's pretty much on his head. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All right. But yeah, that that was my favorite as far as that. Uh, I did love the whole dinosaur one that you did mention, too. And I'm sure Daphne and Paik from Run For Your Lives on podcast go would love it, too. Talking uh, dinosaurs. Talking dinosaurs. And like I just I want to taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, he flies. I want to eat that. Uh, it's like, I'm going to eat his invisible wings. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it, like, you know, because they never spoke of before on their planet. But of all things, dinosaurs speak on this one. And the funniest is, is that, uh, you know, y- you get these these dinosaurs that are, are there. And it's kind of referenced to. Um, 
I mentioned it before. There's a Rick and Morty episode. I'm forgetting which season. So you guys could go into your discussion groups or just tell me flat out in a comment and say, Mark, it was this one. Yeah, it was. Uh, but it was a Rick and Morty episode where the dinosaurs come from another planet and they had to investigate why these dinosaurs are in outer space and why they're coming to Earth and trying to protect it. But every time they try to protect some sort of planet, a meteor hits it. And destroys the, the yeah. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> Meaning, you know, in reference to Mark and possibly kind of destroying them, but he kind of like disappears after that. And uh, I think it was pretty funny. Uh, oh, there's also Batman World. Uh, that one I liked. Wait, uh, so your parents are dead, and you dress like a bat, and your name is. <laughs> And he goes, uh, I think you're being lazy because <laughs> you're a man and a bat. <laughs> oh, God, that and then he so gets funny. taken out of that. Then he's got the campers there talking about his whole thing with Angstrom. And he's around a campfire, kind of like Friday the 13th. Yeah. <laughs> I, I loved that one, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I kind of figured that one. <laughs> but yeah, I, re- I really liked these, uh, these, these multiple little glimpses, glimpses yeah. into the other universes. That was a lot of fun. And in the, the last universe that it gets dropped into, as we all know, everybody, before with the final battle with Angstrom, as he's beating him to all pulp, uh, he literally is in this dimension and it's all sand with a lot of things in the background. Kind of reminds me of the movie, and you, you guys could laugh at me when I mention it, Land of the Lost with Will Farrell. Yeah, I thought of Tatooine. Well, you could do that as well, because there <laughs> were skeletons there, so that mm-hmm. would work as well. But the fact is, is that this is where Mark kind of lays out his aggression, his attitude, his anger towards Angstrom about how Angstrom was going to harm his family, Debbie and Oliver. And he's not holding back. And this is where we see Mark and we feel the Viltrum in him holding back because the reason why Mark is holding back is his virtues and how he's brought up by, I'm not going to say Nolan more from Debbie. It's the human side. And he's trying to rationalize what he did after it happens. And he's covered in blood. We've mentioned it before. We covered Akira and how bloody and disgusting it was back in the eighties. Now this goes 10 times further where you literally see blood dripping. He is rose red with blood dripping yeah. from his body all over his body. And he's wiping it, trying to rationalize it as a person of what he has done, but still feeling guilty for the fact of what he had done and how he's going to get back. I'm stranded. I can't help my family. I can't help Oliver. I can't help mom. What the hell am I going to do? And through that, and he's trying, he's going through the motions and it's such good dialogue drama for an animated film or show, I should say. And, and it does work well. And this is why we like what we're watching and, and covering this because it shows heart and the dialogue. It shows the writing is there. You do feel it in the animation, but you mostly feel it through the dialogue and how it's projected by the voice actors. And you could tell why Stephen Young is as good as he is. He's amazing. Yes. So I really enjoyed that in the sense that it showed his human quality, but we do find out a human quality out of Nolan of all things at the end of the episode as well, while he's talking to (laughs) Alan. (laughs) What was he? Uh, was he utopian? You know, uh, I forget. I have it written down. I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, and I can't find it. I forget. <laughs> I keep saying utopian. He's not utopian. No, I uh, yeah, I t- didn't write it down this episode. I have to go to old notes, and I don't know where they are right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you guys get the gist. Alan the alien. There Al- you yeah, go. that's what I go with. Alan the alien. Alan the one-eyed alien. There you go. Happy. That's all you need. There you go. <laughs> but 
but we all love Alan just because uh. of his character and his point and how innocent he is and how kind he is. And, and him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they set up the whole thing where he and Nolan can talk to each other and yeah. none of the other Viltrumites could hear because when they were talking in space, he's like, no, 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 it's only two people at a time and nobody else can get in on this thought conversation. Bubble <laughs> yeah. Thing. yeah. So I was like, oh, that's why they set that up. Interesting. Good mm-hmm. pull. Yeah, it is a good pull. Uh what I did like, and I, I kind of mentioned it before, just part of my part of my notes I like to throw in for things that it is like literally how Debbie and Oliver were being used to make Mark Cower and you know, Debbie's arm. Uh, that that Ooh, the bra- that ow. compound exposed compound break of the Eek. arm it showed devotion and this is what makes us love Debbie as a character because I've said it before we've said it before like I mentioned it earlier how it just shows that she truly loves Oliver as her own child at that point protecting Oliver not just Mark. And she's there trying to comfort Oliver. Now, yeah. mind you, this is not and her protect, child. Protecting him, like doing an amazing job of protecting him. Yeah. And I'm just like floored. I'm like, this is the child of your husband who tried to kill you, kill your son, kill the world or enslave <laughs> the world from an alien insect that is purple and comes to earth and is a humanoid that is growing exponentially fast for that type of child and will have powers like your own son and you're protecting it perfectly that is like a saint she's she, amazing she's amazing she's absolutely amazing yeah and I just love that. I, I just love how that came out and how she was protecting Oliver to the end. And then uh, we eventually get, of all things, of all from of all people that we kind of loathe, we kind of, you know, have a problem with Mr. Cecil himself, Walter Goggins. Yes. And you know, Cecil trying to show empathy and compassion for Debbie and trying to take care of her and Oliver. And I think that is amazing. I'm like, wow, this is, I think this is the most empathy I've seen from Cecil in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it just blows my mind. But yeah, the, 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 this episode really hit hard with a lot of the touches and the feels. So uh, if you're, you're like me and you get some of these things and you, you like, oh, <laughs> You start to cry. You can yeah. go ahead. It's all right. It's a lot. <laughs> and then, then we have Mark just stuck by himself, living in his own head. He's living in his own head, trying to rationalize everything, trying to justify what he had done, why he had done it, and or not uh, accept it. In order, yeah, he he's twisted at that point. I and, mean, he took a life that the fact that that messes with him is a good thing yes it makes him I question mean, su- himself as it sucks but as it's a, a good human thing. and viltrum at that point he's a mix and he doesn't know which side i think it's like him battling his uh, his literal physical existence and how he was also brought up and it like i said it, it wasn't it, it was due to basically debbie's upbringing on him yeah. and a little bit of nolan i can't say it wasn't because no one was a father to him before he got his powers and was bringing him up as a child but i'm not trying to defend nolan in any way shape or form but the thing is is that he was there yeah and, and he was inflicting those values that debbie did so that's where i think where at this point went nolan and doing everything he had, this is why his longing for Debbie is, is for the fact that she, I, I'm going to say it, and I'll use this term, and I'll, you could hashtag it, copyright, whatever, humanized or humified 
<laughs> of Viltrum, you know, and uh, basically it humanized the Viltrumite. And which is what happened to Nolan. And you could see that with his own people when they're torturing him. Yep. They looked up to him and he was like, I need, he goes, oh, I respected you. And I looked up to you as a kid. And he goes, no, I just need to get up and walk out of here on my own. Because, you know, he was, (laughs) he's very proud of himself and he knows what he can do. And he did stick up because in his own world, he is subjected to the same amount of heavy violence and still suffer just the same way as like, as he did, if not, it's not going to be worse than humans <laughs> What the way he took it out because he's not snapping people and pulling people's heads off or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he does walk out of there and he does have like, just like with, if you look at, uh, if you look at Mark at the end, he's got a black eye. So does Nolan. Mark and Debbie have matching black eyes. That is true. It's adorable and sad at the same time. It it is. No, yeah, they're on opposite sides, but they work. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're mirror imagey. And I'm glad that they actually did fix Debbie's arm. Yeah, I, I was worried when they cut away that she was going to bleed to death. Same here. Like when the, it cut back, I was like, "Oh my god, thank God!" She, like I have in my notes, "Yeah, Debbie's alive." <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, th- it, it's very hard. With a lot of that when it when it comes to these shows and he's like, you just worry for that particular character. So for those of you actually watch the ones who live, I'm pretty sure at the very end, you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, things like that. It's like they're going to kill them. Uh, no, yeah, no. <laughs> that was a close call. <laughs> Stuff like that. It, and it happens in a lot of shows. And I've yet to watch it, but I'm going to binge watch it when it's completely done. Shogun. I haven't watched that. I got to. Uh, actually, I was told earlier today I have to watch Reacher. I started the the three body problem today. Ah. All right. So there's a lot of content out there. So if <laughs> you guys don't have anything to watch, we will. like. Yeah. We've got a lot to keep you busy until season three drops. Correct. But we also like to mention a few other things that that will spark your interest that are not animated related or comic book related things that like captivate us and what we watch, too, because we don't just watch all this stuff all the time. Unfortunately, like me at times, like if I'm really bored and out of the blue, I'll just turn on Spider-Man No Way Home, Far From Home, all the Marvel stuff, or even if, you know, it suits me, I've yet to go back to it. And I'm waiting on Steve. (laughs) Echo. (laughs) <laughs> so i have to go back to that and x-men 97 is almost done so we have to do a, a whole season synopsis and thought on how x-men was and a lot of our thoughts are probably going to be based upon animation voice acting and how they were able to propel certain storylines and plots that came from the comics as well as where they left off from the original animated version so when we talk about that it's just going to be overall everybody so keep that in mind but uh yeah i it i don't just watch that stuff i also you know you guys all know that i do adrenaline cinema podcast and i have other interests as well so look forward to the Anne rice stuff at the end of the month well beginning (laughs) around may (laughs) <laughs> by the end of this month you'll have at least the episode of Vamp- uh, interview with the vampire with Lara Rima, Danny and myself but uh, yeah we have other interests so we like to influence you guys so tell us what you don't like and tell us what you do like That's maybe all- we'll cover stuff exactly and on top of that we'll have some interesting news about uh, a Sandman spinoff at the mm. very end of the podcast as well as where we're going to be after when it comes to Sandman cast but other than that, uh, we're, we're going to move on to more of the story because we digressed, as I usually do. But uh, the appearance of the Guardians of the Globe. The 20-year-older Guardians of the Globe. Yeah, you can see how uh, uh, old that Adam Eve is. She looks far older. Somebody who's like looked like in her 40s. Well, yeah, because she's in her 20s, and now she's in her 40s. It's 20 years later. And... We get Rex in the robot suit, even though it's Rudy's kind of voice talking. So what? 
Rex is inside the robot and Rudy's part is the robot body. What's going on yeah, there? It's going to be interesting to <laughs> see how that we've got 20 years to see how that plays out. Yeah. And then we got the other teams. We see Monster Girl. She doesn't really say much. We don't know if she's a robot or a real monster. That was the one thing I was like a little bit like, eh, no, I want to know. Seemed very adamant not to be a robot at this current point in time. Yeah. Yeah, but also the the fact the way that uh, when Rex was in the robot suit, it was speaking like Rudy, kind of robotic. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he talked to like robot. So I was like, OK. And then, of course, you know, I, you know, he has to tell and we get that loving speech from Adam Eve to Mark saying that I love you. I should have said it and blah, blah, blah. And please tell me something to give me hope. Whatever, blah, 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 blah. Say anything. And then, of course, yeah. Rex at the end, very end, taking off the helmet, and we get the reveal. It's like, oh, it's Rex in a robot suit. <laughs> and he goes, uh, whatever happened to not giving away anything of the past? <laughs> Sometimes. And, yeah. And apparently they had, um, what was it, four functioning time travel machines? At one yeah. point. And uh, that was interesting because I would love to see those adventures. But it's got to be not just time travel, but like dimensional travel. Dimensional as well. And it would be something that they would have to see different variations of Mark. Because yeah. I was and, thinking like while he was beating the crap out of Angstrom, I'm like, dude, if you kill, like I literally I have in my nose, I'm like, wait, if he kills Angstrom on this, in this dimension, how the hell does he get home? Exactly. So now we find out they give him a way to get home. Yeah. Which is great. So he's able to come back home. Uh, and we do see the conversation with Adam Eve. With him. He doesn't I truly. Mean, they make more. Th- I mean, I love Amber. Amber's such a sweet girl. Yeah. She's such a sweet girl. Like, absolutely nothing against her. No shade. No nothing. She's She was amazing. Like, Very most honest. people would not have put up with what she put up with. Oh, yeah. She was always amazing every step of the way. But Adam Eve makes more sense for a partner for Mark. Yes. Yeah. Just based upon their powers, how they were brought up and lived. Yeah. You know, she came from a uh, family that scorned her powers, whereas Mark was, you know, her his parents were trying to embrace him trying to get these powers and I, it's it's a match made in heaven in the sense that they they could just like complement one another as far as like helping each other with their own issues and i think it'll work uh i'm looking forward to see what we get more from these two but i it seems like that you know mark is still at arm's distance even at the end of the conversation yeah i mean is he still technically with Amber? Did they officially break up? I forget. They did. Okay. But like, I mean, he's still reeling from that. He's still thinking he can't have a girlfriend because like, I get him being, and he's also reeling with the, I just killed somebody. Like, yes. he's not in a place right now. <laughs> no, he's not in the right state he of mind. He's not in a place right now. But he was also given that issue of like, by the 20 year older version of Adam Eve saying, right. do something. And it's just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, he is a boy. He is a boy and he's still learning and he's still growing. And we actually saw that last episode when we saw him at the convention of how we typically are. But yeah, sometimes uh. we don't grow out of those things. Everybody. I'm still like a child at a convention. And I feel bad for any woman that has to deal with me at a convention that I'm with. <laughs> and Jamie will say the same thing for her boyfriend, Tony. Oh, he likes nerdy stuff, too. Now he likes dirty stuff, too. You, you had to teach him. <laughs> yeah. But he jumped He jumped in with both feet. Both he loved feet. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, he did. Uh, that, that's I just unlocked family. his nerdy potential. That was all. <laughs> uh, and cue the song Get Nerdy by Weird Al. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, uh, there, there was one cool scene that I did really enjoy. Rudy and Amanda talking over making a sandwich. Yeah. 
I, I thought they that were was, so cute together. It is. So uh, cute. I like them. And it's Rudy literally just trying to express his love for her, you know, for Monster Girl. Yeah. And, and trying to say he doesn't know he wants to fix her problems. Uh, but it was such an adult apology to her from him regarding this, explaining why, because he doesn't feel completely human. Yeah. And she wants him to talk to her as literally just a person. And to have a real date and just be together. And they don't have to talk about powers or whatever. It could be anything. And it's just him wanting to learn to be human. And she, it's funny the look on his face. He didn't realize that, you know, she wanted him to date her. And, yeah. And then she gives him half the sandwich and they're able to have that conversation. And that was so, so I think cute. It's a, it, I think it's a good step in the right direction. And I look forward to seeing what, what comes out later on when it comes to these two. So. Uh, the only other thing that I have is confusion. With duplicate? Nope, nope, nope. We won't get to that. I want to leave that for a little bit of next to last. But uh, Jane and Riley in what looks like to be Egypt. And that's a... <sighs> That was Who another season. character. It was another season. It, yeah. they, it, they showed it in another season. Like this. What's yeah. his name? I completely Kahar. forgot. Yeah, I Kahar. forgot too. I had to like look it up. I was like, okay. like when they showed the dad dead. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah. I <laughs> remembered it from something, but I didn't go back to it. So those of you who are binge watching, go back. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's in he, season one. Yeah, Mark keeps accidentally screwing up his plans for uh, domination. <laughs> <laughs> but we get uh, Jane played by a uh, voice by Ella Pernell and Riley played by, we all know, Chloe Bennett, who is in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then obviously um, Clancy Brown as Kahara, I think. Is it Kahar? All right. I think. Yeah, it's Kahar. Kahar. And I thought it was a strange scene because, you know, we know that uh, Jane has powers and Riley doesn't. And they were both there and then they're trying to get into this and trying to get something from Kahar. So well, they were trying to figure out what happened to their dad, to her dad. Yeah. So, I forget which one's dad, but one of their dads. <laughs> but they're they're, they're going to wind up taking, I think this is going to be something that happens over three seasons. I don't or, think we're going to get the true yeah. story until like maybe yeah. season four or five. I love these little these little Easter eggs they build into the story. Like well, it's like a comic. Yeah. You don't exactly. know because you're gonna get it later on, or they do a side story like they did with Adam Eve. And interesting that you know Kahar mm -hmm. cannot inhibit the inhabit, not inhibit a, man, inhabit a woman. A woman. Yeah. So he's kind of like, like he's like, oh he's all disappointed because you're not men. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, he killed the bad. man. He, that was here. He's right there. See the dead body of my father? Yeah, he killed exactly. him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an interesting take. And it kind of made me question going, what did I miss? And I have to go back. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun little Easter egg that's popping up. So for you comic book readers, it's one of those things where you revert back to a previous issue and you have to go back and read that comic. Because usually they put those little side notes at the very bottom right. Yeah. The star on it. And he tells go, you what issue to go to. Issue number 121. And you go to that. But it's not the issue we'll issue, everybody. So, but it, it's fun when they put those kind of Easter eggs in the shows that are based upon comics to give it that feel. So it makes you want to go back and rewatch. So gives them more viewing points on Amazon, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Add this to the things that the, uh, comic book artist was talking about at the con episode <laughs> exactly so um all right uh so we got i mean we didn't talk too much about omni man's being put to death yes like, he has to be he has to prove his worth mm -hmm. to be killed yeah that's very vitriol. Like that fits them so it well. It fits their culture and how they treat not only other worlds but their own people. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I fr- I'm like, there's wow. no respect unless you are there able to pummel and beat the crap I was out like, of somebody else, the gladiator yeah. to the end. <laughs> I'm like, wow, they're really letting him. I'm like, he's going to make a break. I'm like, is he going to make a break for it? What's going on? And I'm like, oh, they're just testing to see if he's good enough to be killed. Okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah it's showing his, showing his worth as a Viltrum. Is yeah. he strong enough to handle it? And that's really sad. But uh, we get that ending thing with Alan talking to Nolan in the prison. And uh, it, it, you could see how human that Alan, like Nolan is. He wants to pay for what he has done. Yeah. And then Alan wants to help him because he was telling him, he goes, dude, I need to bring you back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm like hearing it getting... in Seth Rogen's kind of voice. Like, dude <laughs> yeah, it was so funny like my boyfriend doesn't watch uh, mo- these episodes he's he just doesn't like ca- cartoons for whatever reason which or animated I find weird yeah yeah um but he's like i know that voice he's like i could pick seth rogan's voice out from anywhere I was like, yep, good job <laughs> and the laugh <laughs> uh but i just love the fact that we get no one showing compassion showing a sense of human feelings like he has actually changed as an individual and adapting or adopting these human qualities of feeling. And he's missing of all people. And it, he doesn't say outrightly Debbie. He says he misses his wife. And what Jamie mentioned earlier, she goes, well, I don't know if it was the insect. <laughs> it's like, no, it's like literally Debbie. I don't, I don't think it was her. You know, it was She's referencing supposed to be dead Debbie. by now anyway. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hopefully that it's like a plot twist at a later <laughs> season. I'm back. What? Well, <laughs> through your Viltrumate uh, semen, I was able to. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> I have internal organs like a human. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. I know. I know. That's a, a pornographic kind of view. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> My little twist in mind. But I, I think uh, I don't think they'll ever bring her back. But I think in the sense that they're trying to show some sort of uh, humanizing of Nolan. So that yeah. way feel for him and, well, and uh, how he would be able to help Mark in a future time. I, I would not be surprised if we do see Nolan Allen coming to Mark's aid on earth against the Viltrumites. Yeah. Agreed. Nolan, Alan. Um, I can't think of who's Alan working for. Who's the one that made Alan strong. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We actually, it's Peter t- Cullen's character. Yeah. <laughs> like the, it's a t- I think it's a T word, but okay. But him. It's a T plus, word. <laughs> plus they've got the other people in those, in that book to find. Correct. In the books. Yes. That, that so no one has. There's an army that, or um, Alan is getting together. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that also Easter eggs, everybody. And yeah. for you comic book readers, you will know, but we don't, but we don't. Always, I'm not a comic book reader. On this you one. can let us know. You know, I, I still have to buy and eventually sit and read yeah, and actually I do keep that. Buying and don't have time to sit and read. Yeah, I know. It's like moments that you have to, just like me, when we talked about during Sandman cast and I did not read everything, but I was trying to go as we go. And then you were the person who knew everything. Oh, <laughs> yes. Sandman, I make time for. She well, makes- not that new things are coming out, but yeah. Yeah. I've read that one several times. That makes me happy. But uh, those were all of my notes on favorite moments and thoughts. I have a, a couple of quotes and that's about it. Well, we did not talk about duplicate. <gasps> oh, let's talk Being about a duplicate. Horcrux. Hmm? She's a Horcrux. Harry Potter. Oh, sh- yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, duplicate. So what we thought was number one was actually, or what we thought was the original was actually the first copy. Mm-hmm. And now we saw the original who's been hiding out and. In a cabin in Alaska or something. Well, no, no. She showed up to what's his name's cabin. In Mortis. In Mortis's cabin. Yeah. Um, immortal, immortal. Um, she showed up to his cabin because she could feel what all the other duplicates felt. Yeah, and they're du- all dead. But she also knew how much 
immortal loved her. So she had to find him to talk to him because she's still alive. She's still alive. Plot twist. Plot twist. But I mean, we can, that makes sense. If you're, but, I mean, if yeah, I we was can't get the other person though that they killed during that during the serpents society. Yeah, it's like the Mahler. It's like the Mahler twins. There's always one to make another one. Yeah, but with in this case, she better make another freaking duplication. She's. Herself. I mean, she's gonna have to. Yeah. It's not. I mean, it's dumb not to. Yeah. But also, like, is it? making more of you and having them killed off is that kind of like a Voldemort thing like do you become less human each time that happens because she I says she feels everything so she's got to feel those deaths too like that well, can't that, be easy well, yeah she feels everything hopefully a, a mortal is not a perv and wants to have like a massive orgy with one woman multiple oh, times Rex already did that oh that's right <laughs> season one. Oh my god if only a mortal knew that, he'd beat him to the pulp. <laughs> hey, everybody's allowed to have a past. Yeah, that is true. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm i looking forward to see their relationship grow. Hopefully she does duplicate. And I'm wondering, if does she go back to the Guardians? Does she stay? Do those two just stay hidden and off and the grid? And hide it. I, I, I would assume that, uh, considering their love for each other, she stays there and hides. Yeah. She might send a duplicate with Immortal if he does go back. If he, yeah, but I wonder if they stay off the grid for at least a while until something big happens. I would not be surprised if that does happen, where yeah. they they stay off the grid and then they come back when absolutely needed. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Like Kahar, um, <laughs> we, we did see an alien that we did see before in this particular episode, and I'm forgetting who it was. Guy had like a skeleton kind of feature, and then he was going after Mark and goes, Oh, how dare you? Oh, yeah, I'm forgetting the guy, but yeah, we talked about him before. But he took he took on the guardians and almost took them out. But whatever, <laughs> if you guys know, let us know. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that's how uh, we felt about this particular episode. <laughs> how do you feel? Let us know. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you have any quotes that you liked within the particular episode? Um, if the bad guys are dead and the good guys are alive, that's a good day. Cecil. That is true. Yeah. It's like simple words. to the point. Mm -hmm. But then Mark's like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> Are they still a good guy if they killed somebody? Like, I get where Mark's still having this crisis. He's still having that crisis of uh, events. Yep. And Debbie validating, you're not your dad, well, Mark. Yeah. yeah, and even Cecil says that, too, to Mark. Yeah, he hears it over and over again. And he hears it, and I think they need to stick it in his brain. Yeah. Uh, one for me would be Mark saying, oh, my God, you're that guy. <laughs> and Ang Angstrom just gets pissed off. I'm that guy? You don't know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And more from Angstrom would be, uh, I love your brother's color. It will give him something to talk about at parties. <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of twisted. It's weird. As long as people don't try to squeeze him like a grape because he's purple. Ew. <laughs> Make him sing the Oompa Loompas. Oh, no, they're orange. That is true. <laughs> uh, the last one I would have would be from Angstrom himself saying your family legacy is blood and then Debbie retorts no not me I raised a boy who defied his father and saved his planet from what you say these worlds are extremely different I know the son I raised and he's not a killer and Angstrom retorts you sure about that Debbie's like you make it sound that this world is the only world where Mark is good and you are bad. And then Angstrom just loses it after that, during that whole conversation about why Debbie started to uh, talk about, you know, Mark being the good guy and him being the bad guy and him going through the flashes of everything of what had happened with every Mark he encountered. But these are a mixture of all you know, the, the things that um, an amalgam of all Angstroms had when they encountered Mark from their worlds. So it, yeah. to, it was interesting. 
I'm glad Angstrom's gone. Yeah, I am too. He was he was a good villain, but not. It wasn't great. anything that was to be all and all of all like super villains, in my opinion. No. And he could have been. It worked for what they needed. Yeah. But I'm glad we're not doing dealing with that for another season. I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah, that's all I had for notes. Uh did you have anything else, Jamie to add or meat? No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll move right along. Um I've been very busy. I lost a lot of friends at work. A lot of layoffs were happening. I did not get laid off, and you know, oddly enough, and um, you know, uh, things are still fresh and new. So I, I kind of had a delay of when I put out the last episode. So you guys got it. Have to thank for all those new listeners that uh, joined us on YouTube, apparently, because I got inundated with a bunch of emails. Hello so and welcome. Oh well, and welcome, and thank you, and please share the wealth and spread it to other friends that are interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, thank for everybody to for the eighty-two views that we got on YouTube, and nice. please subscribe and let people know that that's another way for them to listen to the podcast. They don't necessarily have to use a podcast player of choice. Some people just use YouTube or YouTube podcasts. That that's great. But uh, thank you all for uh, listening and and, uh, showing that to us. Uh, With that, uh, we're going to move right into some uh, interesting comic news that's out there in the world. So first off, and it's probably old by now, but Jonathan Majors avoids prison time and is on currently on probation with his assault against his uh, former girlfriend, even though he was let go from Disney. So he doesn't have to do prison time. He's doing this all through probation. So um Which curious. is how a lot of those assault cases turn out. Yeah, but he also lost his job from Disney at this point. He's no longer King, right. King the Conqueror, and uh Disney's gonna try to reevaluate what's going on with uh the the, <laughs> the MCU. And it's story plot points. So I look yeah. forward to what we get later on. I'm it looking sucks. He was it. a good actor, but um, he yeah. messed up. <laughs> he, uh, he messed up in some way, shape, or form. I, I can't give divine justice because I was not there. <clears throat> I, I I know that the, the jury did what they did. And yeah, he, no, I mean, the, the few recordings that I heard were pretty damaging. Oh, I never listened to anything. So I, I was trying to avoid it. But if we do get Coleman Domingo and it's like one other that runner up would be for Kang, awesome. just to give us a different version of Kang, that would be great. I love Coleman Domingo. He's a very, very good actor. We know him from Fear of the Walking Dead. And uh, I, I look forward to if we do get to see him as Kang, as well as if we do get Galactus or Doctor Doom, depending on who we get as the new big bad or Annihilus. We'll see. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Next up would be uh, James Gunn actually canceled the Brightburn 2 sequel. So oh, as, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. So as we all know that uh, James Gunn, a number of years ago, Steve and I actually did cover it here on Pounce to Pixels podcast, and uh, we did cover Brightburn. I really did enjoy it. It was out in the theaters at the time. We both went to go see it and we had a good time watching it. Basically did a quick thought of that particular movie Uh, through that. I kind (laughs) of recommended to Steve that we cover Superman Red Sun, which this was like pretty much an extreme version of uh, uh, with a slight plot twist. So imagine yourself uh, having a Superman with young powers coming down to Earth from a different planet like Superman powers and uh, wind up going on a killing spree and being evil. And at the very end, we do see flashes of, let's say a um, Aquaman that's evil as well as a wonder woman that is evil. And there's another character too that I'm forgetting, but regardless, it it was, it was very interesting, very fun. True James Gunn horror slash superhero. 
at the same time. Very extreme. And uh, I I do enjoy the movie. I do. I did enjoy it. And I still do enjoy it in the sense of not because I'm twisted and I like to see violence and all that stuff. But the fact that the type of story it portrayed about somebody with powers and how would they be and if they went dark or they were dark in general. And they just didn't know it based upon their, um, you know, alien heritage. <laughs> now, keep in mind, do not be <laughs> a bigot to a real space alien because you don't know if they're going to be good or evil. Yeah, they could be Alan. Yes, exactly. They could be a one-eyed friend to you and yes. read your mind. And pack a wallop, <laughs> like a filter. Uh, but yeah, it, it uh, he has ended that. So he's trying to pursue more. He did give uh, key information about Peacemaker. He's looking forward to, for it to come back at a later point. It's just a delay for the fact that he is basically chief content creator for DC or the DCEU, at, like Kevin Feige is for uh, the MCU. So keep that in mind. And I just enjoy whatever James Gunn does. They did have recasting for like a new Superman and a whole bunch of people. And it's interesting to see because, you know, the new Superman kind of does look like Henry Cavill. And I'm like, why didn't we just get just Henry Cavill? <laughs> He's had his time. I, yeah, well, uh, there's talks that Henry Cavill has been talking with Marvel. So the odds of seeing Deadpool, who was Green Lantern, and Superman, who is now, who knows, in an MCU movie at the same time, face to face, and then maybe doing a fourth wall break going, weren't we here before as other characters? <laughs> that would be amazing. But that's just me. So, Henry Cavill, if you're listening, please let me know. And, of course, Ryan Reynolds, we are looking forward to Deadpool Wolverine. So, uh, there's talk about uh, a new trailer coming out. Or Deadpool Wolverine. Look forward I'm to it. I'm excited. I'm all excited as well. There's more talk about Hulk. A Hulk moment. And uh, if we do get that, I will be extremely happy. Because I want to see Hulk 181. Or we have an encounter with Wolverine and the Incredible Hulk. So, And then, of course, we're going to have Deadpool Core. So, uh, we've already mentioned it before, I think. Where we do get Headpool, Dogpool, Lady Deadpool. Ooh. Regular Deadpool. And uh, the rumor is, is Lady Deadpool will be Ryan Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively. Oh, that's exciting. That would be amazing. And then we get some, I like to call him Glampool, because if you ever see Ryan Reynolds in the behind the scenes shots, he's got long hair. His face is not all messed up. He looks like a pretty boy from like a badass heavy metal group back in the 80s <laughs> with his hair. So, uh, uh, I'm looking. I'm sure he gets killed in some way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we got Headpool, which is I, I love Headpool because I have a, you know, a, an animated toy that does talk to you and I can make practical jokes for my friends and family. That's fun. So I love uh, my Headpool, but it's the voice of the actual video game. If you ever got the Xbox 360 and the original Xbox version of Deadpool, so. Um, I have fun with that one. But uh, yeah, that's about it for uh, news. But uh, I have a little bit of a promotion. It's a, a friend of mine. Uh, he also is on another podcast that I do partake on, which is on a hiatus right now because uh, our friend Rob Moda is on a little bit of a hiatus because he's buying a house, trying to settle in, try to get moved in and take care of himself. So Fantasy Picks Movie Edition is on hold at the moment. We'll probably come back probably in the summer. I'm not going to say exactly when. I'm going to let Rob state that when he does come back onto the podcast when he can. Right now, all his stuff is packed away, and he goes, uh, bro, I can't really podcast right now because <laughs> everything's packed away. So, But he's, having, uh, he's doing what he needs to for work and trying to take care of his new house. But our friend Adam Gonzalez, who's been on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, uh, is an independent filmmaker. And he's currently in production or trying to get on the way into production of a, an, a movie he wanted to do. And he's been um, conceiving it for the past two years. And it's called Poe. And 
in his words, it says, explore the tragic life and enduring legacy of Edgar Allan Poe, the enig enigmatic literary mastermind whose haunting tales mirrored his own dark and turbulent existence. Ooh. He states, we will be creating a 15 minute short film of the most famous poem, the Raven as a proof of concept in August, 2024. Leading up to our crowdfunding campaign starting on September 1st, people can follow at poe.movie and at Gilded Harbor for production casting and funding updates. So I will try to copy in the links of the movie and notes so that way he's got a few promo clips, which are pretty cool. They were on Facebook. Unfortunately, I couldn't share them, but I will do my best. He states these two videos are quick camera tests, which I will be doing more, more of over the next few months leading up to the film, The Raven. So keep that in mind, everybody, and uh, show some support. And all you have to do is go to at poe.movie or at Gilded Harbor. So I will be putting those. Um, Sounds really interesting. Links. Yeah. Who doesn't love Poe? Yeah, who doesn't love Edgar Allan Poe? I, I did. I always loved the stories. Me, I always followed, like, of, of all things, my thing was always H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe, Stephen King, Clive Barker, and uh, a few other artists. But, uh, yeah, that's me. And as far as horror writing, I always followed, too. Uh, as well as, you know, Jules Verne and all that cool stuff that we all like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was my little bit of a promotion for Adam Gonzalez. So, Adam, if you're listening, uh, thanks for uh, for giving me the information. I'm hoping it helps out. I'm going to keep throwing the promotion into the notes. And then we'll do that also on our Facebook page as well as our Instagram as well. So hopefully people could follow it and uh, at least get you where you need to be for your film. Uh, on to uh, podcast recommendations. So, do you have anything, Jane, that you would like to recommend? Um, the extraordinary podcast with Greg and Penny. They I finally have, started I, posting it. I just finished the season. <laughs> oh, you did? I haven't even yeah. started the season yet. And it's it, fun. It's fun, everybody. So think about superheroes are all have messed up kind of crazy powers or people who want to have powers. Well, everybody has powers except our our hero, except our the one girl character. we follow. Yeah. Yeah. Hero might be a strong word for her. <laughs> she She's a great character, though. And she she's is a in great love character. with her cat, who's a man, who's married. Who's named Jizz Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Jizz Lord, everybody. Jizz Lord. Yes. Not a show for children. <laughs> Not a show for children. This is more adult oriented. It's English. So keep that in mind. Tongue in British, cheek. Yeah. British humor. So uh, I did enjoy the first season. I loved it. I followed it. I listened to Penny and Greg. It's amazing. They can be found on podcastka.com. And uh, I have yet to. Uh, I'm probably just going to just binge watch it over the weekend. Like, what? Where are we at? Yeah, How many episodes? Only... I want to say there's only eight. Like it's not a it's not a long commitment. They're only I think like half hour ish episodes. Like they're not okay because it's not I a think big. I started watching the first episode and I kind of fell asleep during it because it's Hulu. And then when commercials come on, I kind of fade out and I kind of faded out when I was in bed. But I got to that point where it's just like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But I did that at the end of the season. I fell asleep during like episode seven. And woke up like as episode eight was ending. I'm like, well, I'm gonna rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> so i'll probably do that this weekend i'm trying to find the time i have no distractions hopefully and i will get more involved with what else is going on in podcasting or what i have to do in podcasting uh for my recommendations i would say podcastica.com where you could find that particular podcast so all i have to do is go to podcastica.com and look for such other podcasts like or shows, I should say, because it's actually a show. Welcome to the apocalypse. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. And we had Ran uh, we Randy had 
uh, Lucy and Jason on as podcasters on the actual story. So it's an improv style story of a zombie apocalypse. And people do speak in certain words and high pitched voices. <laughs> so uh, Randy does his uh, cool lady's voice, like similar to what I did, which I kind of mucked up. And uh, his other friends, and they kind of go on to this whole uh, adventure with these three people that encounter weird and strange people during the zombie apocalypse. Greg has been on there. I think Penny's been on there. Kara's been on there. Sam Lowe has been on there. Lucy, Jason, and uh, I'm forgetting a few others too. So, but uh, keep in yeah. mind, just go go to podcastica.com, find it. Uh, you could also find. Penny and Kara on still slaying on the Buffy verse podcast, which I was on. I, I did a couple episodes. I did one per season. I, I don't like to hog people's podcasts and guesting on. I only want to go on the ones that I like and I love for the episodes. Cause I'm a big Buffy fan and it's really strange for a lot of people. They're like, why do you like that? And I was like, I don't know. And I couldn't even get into angel at, for a while. I still have to do a rewatch when Penny does that. But it's really good. So if you're a Buffy fan, they uh, they started the series only on season two. They ignored all of season one, went into season two. I was on for the Halloween episode. And then um, for season three, I came on for Homecoming, which was a basis for the movie Cabin in the Woods. That uh, uh, JW, Joss Whedon, who we try not to speak of too much. But he, uh, him and uh, another screenwriter did that. And that's what the uh, inspiration for Cabin in the Woods was from. So I had to do that one because I just love the idea and the weird creatures that were in there, the zombie, uh, the vampires that were in it, uh, the weird stegosaur kind of creature that was in it and uh, how they were trying to trap two, uh, two slayers at the same time. Uh, we also have Strange Indeed. I'm not sure exactly what they're covering right now, but I would love to give a nice shout out to Rima and Paik at the moment and I think check they're them on out. a bit of a hiatus right now. So uh, if you want to check out Rima on any other podcast other than Strange Indeed, you could find her when we have her on for the interview with a vampire podcast when we actually cover the movie that had. Brad Pitt and Christian Slater, Kirsten Dunst, the old 90s version. So we're going to do that first before we actually start covering Interview with the Vampire Season 2 on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So check that out when it does come out and we'll keep you notified. Uh, also, Run for Your Lives and their continuous uh, work with all, everything that makes you run for your lives. All these movies. I've yet to catch up. I'm like behind by like five or six episodes, which is so funny. And I still have to have like, you know, Daphne and Paik in my ears at times. As well as revisited a Wilhelm and Podcast collaboration that uh, is doing Ted Lasso right now for season three. And they're coming up halfway through at this point for season three of Ted Lasso. Yeah, they're blowing through it. They're doing a great job. They're doing really good on it. And I do enjoy that. So uh, check out Wilhelm, go to Wilhelm.com or podcastica.com to follow the revisited podcast. And you could also check out the other stuff on Wilhelm when they do the uh, movie swap. So both Kristen and Ben give themselves uh, each homework, which is fun. But uh, for, well, I, I had mentioned before I was behind, I did not send anything up for feedback, but if you just want to submit any feedback, you're more than welcome to do so. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. If you want to just send a regular email, all you have to do is go to uh, send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels. To is spelled out T O and then the number uh, pixels. Uh, <laughs> all right. Panels, two is spelled out T O, pixels, and the number one at gmail.com. See, I could get it right. I can't be tongue tied. You did. I'm I, proud of you. Yay. 
<laughs> I need a lollipop. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and then, or like I said, you could just email us there and then uh, you could write out a texted email or read it on the podcast. Uh, if you feel that you want to be part of the podcast, you're more than welcome to. All you have to do is record your voice and send it as an attachment. I could play it right here, right on the podcast as we're recording. You'll be heard. Your voice is heard. Even if you have a subject and idea and thought that you want to be done for the podcast or be on for, just email me. I get that in an email. Let me know. Uh, all that I require is uh, headphones, a microphone, and a way for you to uh, record your voice, if possible, on your own. Uh, other than that, we do everything through Zoom, eventually StreamYard, and then we'll do that, and then we'll have something cool and do maybe eventually live cast, like live podcasts, like uh, on YouTube, perhaps, which you could find us on YouTube. And we, uh, we mentioned it earlier, we got a few listeners on YouTube, but all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, uh, subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified and like the actual podcast. And if you could possibly can leave a comment below of uh, the particular podcast and what you liked about it. So we could actually talk about it. And that would be very grateful as well as if, uh, you know, you're listening to us currently now on any podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify iHeartRadio. There's a numerous amounts of uh, podcast players of choice. If there is, and there is definitely on um, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, there's a way to rate and review. If you give us five stars, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, also, write out something because uh, it spotlights and gets noticed more, and that's how people get to know us and get to hear us. We'd appreciate be it forever. We would definitely appreciate it. But I always tell everybody, just be honest. And, and it's really a way for you to be you know, a, a critique yourself. So you could tell us, you know, either A, you don't like this, or B, you would want to see more of this. And that would be amazing. Or if there's something you want me to change, because if you want, I could get a voice changer or harmonizer and I could change my voice. <laughs> it's your choice. I could sound like Minnie Mouse or anything, whatever you want, <laughs> if I'm annoying. But regardless, uh, it would be great if uh, you could do that and it'd be greatly appreciated. And we'll, we'll definitely give you the shout out. And like I said, if uh, there are those people that have an idea that we haven't done yet, please let us know. And if you want to be on the podcast, it's very open to that. So let us know. Uh, and that's about it. That's uh, what we have right now uh where can listeners hear us i kind of mentioned it a bunch of times obviously <laughs> you can hear me right here on panels the pixels podcast as always uh we're going to come out with more content as the days go by and months go by so it's got a lot be, there's gonna be a lot more coming on uh you can hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast as well and uh i know i've been talking up a storm but eventually it will be out uh frank and i just need time to record we'll be doing escape from la uh, which is uh, finalizing uh, the escape series for John Carpenter. So Frank and I will be doing that. Uh, I'm trying to contact Jerry, see if we can do more ape stuff. And I'm going to talk to our friend Ben and see if he wants to come on for a few things that we have uh, already discussed. Uh, my friend Ben Elmore, he uh, he's still interested. It's just that, you know, like him, schedule gets tied up. We're going to do more. And Ben Beck as well. So Ben Beck, who does Wilhelm, will be on again as well. So uh, we kind of mentioned it when we covered Monarch on podcast.com. And uh, where else can listeners hear you, Jamie? I know you, you, you're you here and <laughs> where you have more plans to do more stuff, especially on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, yeah, eventually we're going to do that Friday the 13th. Yes. Part four, everybody. Part four. And mm -hmm. we are discussing doing the Dead Boy Detectives. Which is a spinoff of the Sandman series for Netflix. And uh, a lot of you, all you have to do is go to podcastica.com. And right there, you'll see all the links for all the podcasts there. And Sandman Cast is still there for season one, which we will be back for for Podcastica, as well as for the new one 
with the ghost detectives. So we're going to try to get that done for you. And you can listen to there on podcast.com and we'll keep you apprised of what's going on as far as like when we're going to be recording. I'll leave it here on panels to pixels podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Pyrocar entertainment, or, uh, you know, adrenaline cinema podcast. I usually try to cross link everything when it comes to all the podcasts that I do. So keep that in mind. But, um, yeah, I, I think that was our episode on Yay. season two, episode eight of season uh, two Invent- in total. Yeah, I gotta wait for season three. Eh, well, it's coming out. It's coming. It's a coming, lady. <laughs> I had fun with this one. Uh, it's Me it's too. pretty cool. So, um, so basically, that's our our episode. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels the Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.